Welcome to Mistara, as today we're looking at the whitest of all sentient races. Elves so pale the Celts tell them they need more sun. The evil twisted cousins of the Shadow Elves, shot and elfin, are morally corrupt, unrepentantly evil, and inexplicably German. So what makes them walking incarnations of jealousy? Why do they feud with other followers of their own patron immortal? Can they be redeemed? How many albinos am I going to have to Google today to make this video? I'm Mr. Welch, and today everything's going to be all white. Shot and Alfin were introduced in the Hollow World Sourcebook as a unique race, though they were first mentioned as Shadow Elves in the Orcs of Thar Gazetteer. Shot and Alfin were one of the original Shadow Elf clans, but were twisted by the lies and promises of Atzantiotl. He taught them that their situation was caused by others, and that all their failings were not their fault, and that only by seeking revenge could they regain their rightful place. Of course, if you've followed this channel at all, you know Atzantiotl is a lying bastard. Shot and Alfin differ from other elves in appearance, even their Shadow Elf cousins. The first thing you will notice is their skin is chalky white, not just pale like the Shadow Elves. We're talking take Elric of Melnabone, give him a milk bath, and then put him in a U-boat for six months white. They are short for elves, with males reaching five foot tall and women a few inches shorter. Their hair is typically pure white, but shades of steel gray are possible. Their eyes tend to be pale blue to gray, with some deviation among the population. But the one aspect they're most famous for is their habit of catching fire in direct sunlight. It's not something they can get around, direct sunlight physically harms them. It takes a while, a point of damage every hour on an average day, but it can be lethal for weaker members of the race, and explains why they normally clothe themselves in layers of fabric. The Shot and Elfin are not of original Shadow Elf stock, instead they were survivors of the Glantrian Explosion in 1700 BC. These elves fled underground and discovered the Shadow Elves already living in the cave since the Great Rain of Fire. These new elves were adopted by the Shadow Elves and named themselves the Shotten Elfin, the elven word for Shadow Elf. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because what were the Shadow Elves calling themselves before that? Shadow Elf? Skiggy Elf? Never pictured the Shadow Elves as German speakers, but hey, there you go. 200 years after this, Shadow Elf expeditions went to find the surface world to see if it was finally safe to return. But, through some epic critical failures, managed to confuse down for up and ended up in the hollow world instead of the surface. Not sure how you do that, considering if you have any questions on which way to go, drop something and go in the opposite direction of where that went. The hollow world was everything they had hoped for, with green trees, fresh air, and all the land they needed to prosper. What they didn't realize is that when they arrived in the hollow world, they discovered their centuries underground didn't prepare them for the solar radiation of the red sun, and promptly all got radiation poisoning. When they got back home, they told everybody that the hollow world was not great, but not terrible. Then they all died from acute radiation poisoning. It was during this time that the Shot and Alfin were approached by the immortal Edzantiotl, who promised them a new homeland with trees and sunlight and everything the elves vaguely remembered before the world blew up. He twisted them into hating other races because the humans blew the world up twice, and the dwarves were greedy, and every race was somehow responsible for all the Shot and Alfin's woes. They accepted his offer and made him their patron, believing his lies. He told his followers they needed to leave their Shadow Elf cousins and seek out their own fortunes. One group went close to the surface and settled the city of Angmar. There they created the magical city that floated on a sea of lava before displeasing their patron for not being evil enough, and he tried to kill them all with poison gas until they fled into the Hollow World. Upon reaching the Hollow World, Shot and Elfin decided to settle down and spread out across their new land. Only they forgot the Kogalore dwarves were already there, and while known for being cheerful and welcoming, they're also known for not being very tolerant of people trying to slaughter them. So the first of the wars the Shot and Elfin would fight would be in their new home, which they promptly lost. So they relocated to the Oltec lands, with similar reactions and similar results. They finally found a mountainous region unpopulated by sentient creatures and began to settle there. That's when they discovered a horrible truth, their weakness to sunlight. Adzantiotl over the centuries had warped them. In his sadistic whim, he gave the elves everything they wanted, with trees and open skies and wide open spaces, but made the elves vulnerable to the light of the sun. To make it worse, he sent them to the one place where the sun never stopped shining. There is no night in the hollow world, just periods of shadow when the floating continents pass overhead. The Shot and Alfin were unaware of this treachery, and they assume it's because of their exposure to the radiation centuries ago. Because of this, they blame humans for their condition and take no mercy on the ones they capture. Shot and Alfin build their cities underground, with the tops of the structures above ground and a few buildings entirely on the surface. They can't spend too much time there, but they don't want to live miles underground either. When they do go above ground, they are never found without their heavy clothing, covering every aspect of their skin. This isn't like drow players in other settings trying to wear sunglasses to avoid the daylight penalty so they can have overpowered races with no drawbacks. This is to avoid taking actual damage. It's less min-maxing and more survival gear. 
The Shatten Alphans' greatest enemies are the Azkan people. Again, a cruel trick played by their patron Immortal, who likes to do the Immortal version of taking two groups of ants, putting them in the same ant farm, and then shaking it up. The Shatten Alphan copied Azkan architecture at the suggestion of Azantiotl, and then began to believe that it was their idea in the first place. Then they get to the Hollow World and discover another race copying their building style, worshipping their Immortal, and having the Gaul to claim both as their own. The Azkans see the reverse, thinking the Elves are copying them. Needless to say, it was on. No two races hate each other more in the Hollow World than the followers of Bats Antiodal. The fact that this amuses him to no end is proof he's probably the biggest dick in the pantheon of Mastaran Immortals. The war between the Azkan and Shatnalfin have raged continuously for centuries, with little sign of letting up. The Azkan outnumber the Elves by a huge margin, so they can't face them in a field of battle. That and the fact they burn in the open sun, plus nobody wants to march into battle in a hazmat suit. So the Elves rely on guerrilla tactics instead of face-to-face -face battles. The Azkans slaughter the Elves whenever they catch them in the field, so the Elves prefer attacks when the Azkans are sleeping, or they like to ride their flying lizards called flap sails and drop flaming torches on the thatch roofs. The Elves also like to burrow under Azkan cities and attack with surprise, usually during a high religious ceremony for the Azkan, this inflicts heavy losses before they can retreat again. The Azkan look for the Shatnalfin cities with their scouts, and they destroy everyone when they find a city. What they don't realize is the majority of the elves live beneath their villages. Raising the houses above ground does little to stop the elves. The elves have few friends. Of the surrounding nations, they only have peaceful relations with the Traldar. The elves realized they had enemies on almost every side, and they needed somebody to trade with, and they were the least angry at the Traldar. The two people have had a beneficial partnership for some time, but they don't trust each other. The trade is strictly business, they have little to do with each other outside of their caravans and trading posts in each other's lands. The Schottenhofen's biggest problem is the fact that they do not play nice with others. Part of their cultural upbringing is to never let a slight go unavenged. Any criticism, treachery, or defeat must be paid back in kind no matter how long ago it was. If someone else is enjoying themselves or living in an area that the Schottenhofen covet, that goes on the list of grudges. They hold beefs with races and nations that don't even know who they are because they have something the Schottenhofen want. The Neothar people are on their enemies list for living peaceful lives in harmony with nature, something the Schottenhofen can't do for themselves. The fact that the Schottenhofen have little contact with the Neothar, who live hundreds of miles away on the other side of a great forest, means nothing to the elves. Just having what they want is enough to earn their animosity. The elves are a monolithic group. You aren't going to go to another part of the planet and suddenly find a bunch of good aligned ones living in perfect harmony with everyone around them that just sprung out of nowhere. Those that left the Shadow Elves to settle in their own lands in the Hollow World at the encouragement of Atzantiotl are Shatnalvin. Those that didn't are Shadow Elves. There are physical differences, most are trivial, but the ability not to die of a suntan on a cloudy day is the most noticeable. If you find similar elves in a different location, they're going to be a different type of elf. Making a random group of them good guys out of the blue dilutes their history and really adds nothing to the story. That's not to say all shot and elfin are jealousy-fueled monsters. A huge chunk of them, yeah, sure. But when your entire race is brought up with the ancient Scottish motto of no one wounds me with impunity as their most important cultural aspect, making friends can be tough. There is a small minority, about 10%, that realizes that either they've been had by their patron immortal, or that they're just really tired of fighting non-stop wars with everybody. Many of these have turned back to the worship of Raphael, though in private because the Schottenalfen priesthood doesn't tolerate dissenters. The race is matrilineal for the most part. They trace their lineage back through their mothers. Men and women do have equal rights, with female elves taking up about 40% of the military. Despite their most iconic cultural trait being the right of vengeance, they prefer to take their time. Elaborate revenge schemes are greatly admired among the Schottenalfen. The one exception to the matrilineal tracking is the royal family, as they are traced through the most powerful member of each generation, so the ruling family is traced back to the beginning through both men and women, with only the most powerful members of the family earning the right to be remembered. Older shot and often are expelled from their home to avoid being a burden on society. Their culture demands they can never stop moving or return to a place they've been before. Most die quickly in the woods, but a few find a new home or even overcome the spell of preservation and put aside their culture. Granted, few people want to take them up on this offer because they don't live by other elves and most people don't want anything to do with them either. Shot and Alphon are one of the few mostly bad guy races in Mistara. It makes sense. They largely follow one of the worst immortals who has tricked them into becoming truly awful people and then betrayed them by making them vulnerable to the sun while throwing them into a pointless and unending war with another group of his own followers. 
Good shot and Alphan are possible, and the sources point out about 1 in 10 is a follower of Raphael. And while this doesn't automatically make them good guys, it does make them not automatically evil. Shot and Alphan as a race can serve as cannon fodder for your games, or you can try to expose them to the truths behind their religion. They have a lot of depth, because most of the behavior is based almost entirely on the lies their patron immortal has fed them for his own amusement. However, many of them are evil because they just like being evil. They don't want to be redeemed. That closes at the Schottenalfen. You aren't going to find them roaming around because their actual location is pretty small. If you're playing in the Hollow World, they make great villains, especially if the player is wrong one early and it spends the rest of the campaign plotting revenge. Or have a player running one trying to get over their terrible reputation and the fact that he's dressed like an Arizona Eskimo for most of the game. Next week is a very special episode, as while it doesn't have Nancy Reagan telling you not to do drugs, it does feature Gabriel from Hour of the Raven as we split the duties talking about Meridoth, Mastara's contribution to the Domains of Dread. But until next week, remember the best part about having Celtic ancestry is if you mow the yard without a shirt on, King Theoden will show up and ask if you need help. <laughs>